Hi, my name is Anne Marisset. I'm from the Collegial International Center. I'm going to present you what my team and I uh, did about our research project for our class of Web and Optic Physics. Uh, to do so, for this class, we had to research about our exoplanet and calculate different parents. We identify whether the planet is deliverable or not. So, what are the different parents? The planet ID identifies which is the planet, and our planet is K218b. There is also the transit parameter. Uh, there are two types of parameters for the transit. There is a TT and TF. TT is uh, the total transit duration. This means that the total time moving around the star when it blocks the light. The transit will give a curve in the light curve because sometimes there is partially cover the star so it's not dark completely the tf is the duration of transit when the planet disk is completely inside the stellar disk this means that it is in front of the star and it's blocking completely the light gamma is the transit depth which means is how much the light curve is deep assuming there is no stellar limb darkening in other words we assume that the planet is completely dark to calculate the TT, the TF, and gamma, we used the light curve and it gave us in days and we transform in seconds. The impact parameter, which is P, is the sky projection distance between the center of the stellar disk and the center of the planetary disk in conjunction. Uh, it's important to know that the transit duration TT is dependent on the parameter B. To do so, if B equals zero, this means that it's at the center of the stellar disk, and if P is equal to 1, it's at the summit of the disk. So if the exoplanet crosses the center of the stellar disk, which is B equals 0, the transit duration is short. The impact parameter considers the, the gamma, the TF, and the TT, which give us B equals 0 0.983. The planetary mass is the measure of the mass of the planet light object. For the equation of the planetary mass, uh, we use this formula, which takes account the g, the a, the p, and the mass of the star. It's important to know that around the value of a, p, and m, s, we're using this equation, and without the exact value of a, p, m, s, will have been larger than the rest of the equation, resulting in an negative planetary mass. The mass uh, give in kilogram. The planetary radius is the average distance from the sun. In other words, the planetary radius is the distance between a planet's center and its surface. Therefore, planetary radius is the measurement of a planet's size. It is an important parameter because it can determine the potential life and it can determine, determine the planetary temperature. To calculate the planetary radius, we use gamma equal to radius of the planet divided by radius of the star and add up to the two. Therefore, uh, we can rearrange the formula and it gives us the answer in meter. By using the difference in luminosity that reach the measurement device, while the exoplanet is between the star and the measurement device in conjunction with the radius of the star, it is possible to determine how much light the exoplanet blocks. This data can then further be extrapolated to determine the radius of the exoplanet. The volume of a planet is almost three-dimensional space energy occupies in which is this case a planet. To calculate the planetary volume, uh, we use the volume of the planet equal to 4 divided by 3 multiplied by p and the radius of the planet to the 3. This gives us in meter to the tree, and despite being a planet, uh, a standard formula for determining volume can be used. Density is defined as the ratio of mass of an object to the volume of space of an object taken. In other words, it's how much material the planet occupies. The density is an important property because it tells what the planet is made of. To calculate the planetary density, we use the law of density applied to planet, which is m divided by b, and it gives us in kilogram meter to the tree. The orbital period is the time is the period of an exoplanet orbiting around other stars 
is determined by using the slight variation in special position of the star as the planet revolves around it. Just as the star pull on the planet, the planet pull on the star with gravitational part. Due to this, the star has a slight wobble. Using this, as well as comparing the wobble with the transit, the orbital period can be determined. It is important to note that despite the equation using the stereo wobble caused by the gravitational attraction between the star and the planet, the planetary mass is considered to be negligible. Because the planetary mass has not yet to be determined following convention, the planetary mass will be considered negligible in this calculation. To do so, um, the orbital period takes account the t, t, the tf, the g, the m of the star, the omega n, the gamma, and the radius of the star. It will give us an answer in second and we convert it in days. The semi-minor axis and semi-minor axis of the longest diameter of an ellipse and the shortest diameter of an ellipse. It is important to know that the impact parameter and the semi-minor minor axis are both named B, but is not the same thing. We can find we can find the semi-major from the period and the semi-minor from the semi-major and eccentricity. Semi-major axis uh, take account the gamma, the radius of the star, the tt and tf, which give the answer in meter, and we then transfer in a u. Semi-minor axis uh, cannot be determined without the planetary velocity. The eccentricity is the measure of how much the elliptical orbit is flat. This element serves to define the shape and orientation of an elliptical orbit. In order to calculate the eccentricity, the semi-major axis is needed. An approximation of the semi-minor axis can be made with the semi-major axis as well as the distance traveled by the exoplanet in one anterior orbit. The perimeter of the ellipse draw out by the orbit. In order to determine the distance traveled by the exoplanet in a full orbit, the average planetary velocity is needed. With the planetary velocity, the semi-minor axis and therefore the eccentricity could be calculated provided that the semi-major axis is also known. The inclination of an orbit is a radial velocity observation provides information that the minimum mass to know the actual mass the orbital inclination has to be measured. This is done by uh, fitting analytical transit like curve that are using equation. A transitic exoplanet which has impact parameter that is not equal to zero of lower than 90 degrees will have a shorter transit duration. The inclination is E equal cos to the negative one, parenthesis B multiplied by the radius of the star, and divide by a. It gives us uh, 89. The stellar radius means observer a center to limb intensity variation. To calculate a stellar gravity is by calculating the luminosity and temperature using Stephen Boltzmann law. The stellar mass is the mass of the star. To calculate the stellar mass, we multiply the mass of the sun and uh, the proportionality to the sun. The stellar, it is the temperature of a black body of the same size as the star that will radiate the same amount of electromagnetic power as emitted by the star T effective. To calculate the stellar radius, we multiply the radius of the sun to the proportionality to the sun, which gives us 2.86 10 to the Five kilometer. The surface temperature is the temperature related to particle speed and mass. Temperature affects a uh, pressure surface. Temperature is terrestrial planet. Can be determined by how much energy planet receive from the star, and how quickly radiate this that solar energy back to space. When we look at the temperature of NASA is in Kelvin and if we change in degree which give 3183 degrees which is really hot compared to Earth. The stellar luminosity M is the realm for the stellar effective temperature Tf well T effective and stellar radius if available. The formula is luminosity equal 
amount of energy per meter square multiplied by total surface area TAC. This means that the energy meter square gives us 8.010 to the 6, and the TAC gives us 1.028 to the 15 meter square. Since a star is considered to be near black body object, the emissivity can be considered to be 1. The radial velocity covering all orbital phase from measure period, eccentricity, and our view semi amplitude. The radial velocity rely on the Doppler effect, which affects the spectra of objects in space depending on their motion relative to Earth. For example, if you move toward us, it becomes blue, and if you move away, it becomes red light. The semi amplitude K is the system of two gravitational bound objects M1 and M2 in circular orbit. M1 is really more massive than M2, which is the gravitational constant, and A is the semi major axis of orbit. Because M2 is really smaller than M1, we can assume that M1 plus M2 equals M1. Ellipse is the plane curve surrounding two focal points. The axial tilt is the angle between an object, rotation axis, and the orbital axis, where the angle between is equatorial plane and orbit plane. The axial tilt cannot be determined. For atomic spectra for atmosphere, uh, atom, is the spectrum of frequency of electromagnetic radiation emitted or absorbed during transition of electron between energy level then the absorbed photon show up as a black line. The atomic structure for atmosphere cannot be determined since it requires a spectrometric image of the planet while well, it is in transit and while well, it is not in transit. Habitable zone break is the distance between planet to the host star. And if we want to calculate the habitable zone, we use k is related to d to the minus 1 divided by 2, where k is the temperature and d is the distance for the star. In fact, since the effective temperature at the surface of the star is known, an estimate of the temperature of space surrounding the star can be determined. Other factors can play into whether the planet habitable even in within the habitable zone, such as the composition and atmosphere of the planet, which determine how much the heat remains trapped in the planet. Therefore, even if the planet is within the habitable zone surrounding a star, it may not be able to suffer life because the habitable zone is generally considered to be within 273 kV and 373 kV, which the branch comes from the postulate that liquid water is needed to support life, so water must be exist in liquid state for the planet to be considered habitable. Therefore, the effective temperature on the surface of the star is 3457 is 3457 Kelvin, and this is question tries a correlation between the distance and the effective temperature. It is important to note that this is not an equation in the true sense. It is described to proportion between distance and temperature. Therefore, it cannot be used the same way as the standard equation can be used without some manipulation. In this case, using this equation above, in this case, using this equation, in order to within the orbital zone around the star, a planet will be need to be within 0 0.164 AU and 0 0.306 AU of the star. Since the semi major axis of the planetary orbit is 1.035 AU. The exoplanet is far outside the orbital zone range and therefore is highly unlikely to be able to support life. The possible composition of the planet is the composi composition of different elements and what the planet is made of, in other words. Uh, there are three types of uh, planet the giant planet, the terrestrial planet, and small planet. For our planet, it is between a giant one and a terrestrial planet because of the mass we form. For the giant planet, it's composed primarily of elements of hydrogen and helium, which are called gas planets. The gas is compressed to the interior until the hydrogen becomes a liquid ice. For terrestrial planet, which is closer for our planet, are smaller than giant planet. They are composed primarily of rock and metal. The possible composition of planet uh, cannot be determined because we still need to get spectrophysic image of the planet in transit and not in transit. 
and we need more than just the density. The season are the characteristic of a particular circumstance or features such as the weather or deadline hour resulting from the exoplanet, changing position with regard to the star. For calculate the season, we need the accepted which we don't have, so we don't know if there is season or not. The atmospheric composition molecule is a percent of exoplanet atmosphere. For example, our composition is nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon, etc. Uh, it cannot be determined because we still need to get spectrophysic image of the planet in transit and not in transit. As light curve is the most common method to find planet by Kloper Space Telescope. The light curve is a graph of the brightness of the star over time. In fact, our transit is where time the is where there is a dip in the light in the graph, which we, which is when the planet passes in front of the star. In other words, the transit gives the size and orbit and for about the planet. We need at least three dips to confirm the planet actually exists, and the amount of light the planet blocks in transit depends on the size of the planet, and we also need to take into account the size of the star it orbiting around that. In fact, the larger the planet is, the more light is blocked, then deeper is the transit. To do the light curve, we take value of depth, and after we draw our curve light, and we can do the rest of the calculation from that. In other words, we can see that our planet is not livable because the temperature is way off the chart, is really hot, and also their habitat zone range is supposed to be between 0.164 and 0.306, and ours is 1.035.